Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick, uh, quick review on ChatGPT. Um, this is really significant. Um, I mean, from the initial um, testing that I did, I mean, this is on the level of like the invention of the internet or the invention of Bitcoin or the arrival of iPhone. This is huge from a technology standpoint. And in this video, I'm just going to give you a few examples so you can see what a big deal this is and what the uh, ramifications are to software engineering in general. So <clears throat> let's start off with the basic programming interview questions. You know, you see these all the time. Um, you, you give it anything, okay, and it knows how to solve it. Like any of these questions, and it could solve it in, in any language you want it to. You can tell it Java, C++, C Sharp. This thing knows everything. Um, any kind of programming question that you have. Uh, and it'll also do implementations. Like, let's start a new one. The binary search algorithm is blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, you can continue talking with it. Like, it, it, it references its own answers. If I were to continue talking with this thing, um, so here's an example of how you might implement this thing in Java. And I mean, I can say um, from the beginning, I could have said like implement, implement a binary search tree in C++. I could, I mean, the the intelligence of this thing is some is like something I've never seen in my entire life. It knows everything about everything. But it's not just programming interview questions. It's any kind of programming question that you have. Anything that you run into as you're coding, you can ask this thing and it'll tell you the answer. Like... How do I take a picture with my webcam in JavaScript? Okay, so now it's telling me how I'd go about it and an example of how to do that. And you can even refer to its last answers. You can go in the last example, show, a, um, take a five second video instead of an instead of a picture. I mean, see, <clears throat> it's pretty awesome. Like it, it just gives you the code to, to do what you want. This is like the holy grail of programming, guys. You could ask it like, let's say you're trying to figure something out with databases. You know, what are the different types of joins in SQL? I mean, anything that you, um, that you come across in your programming you can now answer it with this thing. It's huge. So this is all the different types of joins that we have in SQL, blah, 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 blah. But you can also, you know, go into, uh, you know, each one and have it explained to you a little bit more. Like I might, might say like, explain what a left outer join is in SQL. Like you can just sit with this thing and actually learn from it because it's conversational. Left outer join, blah, blah, blah. Give an example of a left outer join in a student's and teacher's situation, uh, relation. See? And I mean, forget programming for a second. You can also give it any kind of like, you know, word problem in math. This thing like goes right on. I mean, it figures it out right away. I mean, anything, right? I mean, look at this, it's insane. Let's say just another one. But from what I've seen, I mean, this thing is pretty damn good. I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's an absolute, um, it's just mind blowing what this thing can do. And it explains everything too, and it explains it in like good English too. And it's not just math. I mean, you can give it freaking any of these physics questions on physics.stackexchange. It'll it'll shred everything. <laughs> it'll answer anything. I mean, what are Grassmann numbers or something? Whatever. 
like what is the maximum distortion of the moon we'll give it some like math questions what the hell would it, would it be able to paste this okay so um let me try to paste this now who knows if this is even right or wrong but i'm just saying like at least it knows how to talk about it you know and you can keep on asking it questions you can learn so much from this thing I'm like let's say i said fetch json from the server it will be a list of objects of a student right the name and grade of each student into an HTML table from this data set. Like you can be kind of cryptic about it too, and it'll understand you. Figured it out even without saying uh, JavaScript. It's gonna do you fetch and then then, and it'll create a table. I mean, not bad. I wouldn't really have done it with create elements, but sure. I mean, this would work. Do the above example, but use a wait with the fetch response. So it'll actually change what it wrote to something. Uh, awesome. Do the last example, but don't create elements. Just create strings of table, tr, etc. Dude, this thing is like insane. To create strings of HTML, uh, you can use template literals. Dude, this thing is marvelous. This is this is a dream come true. I mean, look how amazing this is. Now, let's talk about the immediate ramifications that this will have for programmers. Uh, first of all, for the creation of, uh, of code. Okay, usually people, when they code, they have, um, uh, you know, this is my Stack Overflow page, for example. We just go to Stack Overflow and we ask a question, or we go to Google and we ask a question. This thing changes all of that. Meaning, now you could just ask it a question and it will give you the specific answer. You don't have to start searching through a lot of things. I mean, it will basically make it so that programmers don't really need to look at tutorials anymore. Video tutorials, you know how like I had video tutorials? Like you could just ask it here how to create anything. How to create a JavaScript synthesizer. I have like a video on that. Damn, and it's doing with web audio too. It wasn't even using tone.js for this. That's so awesome. Oh man, with an oscillator too. Heck yeah. It's going to do a sine oscillator to create this uh, synthesizer in JavaScript with a gain node. Heck yeah. This is how it's done. So it's like. Yeah, I just see, especially the newer coders, like forget, just forget all my videos. <laughs> like this thing, like rendered everything completely useless. That's how, I mean, yeah, you could just do everything with this thing now. That's how huge this is. And I mean, I can ask it questions about what it told me right now. This is so huge. Now, do I think that this will replace programmers, this chat GPT? Well, for that to happen, okay, right now we have this like question answer dialogue, which won't be too well for, I mean, it, I'd have to copy and paste every time it gives me a, a piece of code, which is not very efficient. So if they could just make it look like JS Fiddle, where it just shows us like a browser window, like I'm just talking about for JavaScript as an example, but let's say they just showed us a browser window in the code maybe a few files that it creates, like what files it has. I mean, that's all like it'll, it'll do it. Uh, I mean, they're so close to doing that uh, for them to, to create like a little browser window and the code that it writes. 
that's a very small step from what they have right now. So this thing will start creating code uh, pretty in, in the near future, I believe. And so will this replace coders um, in the near future, like in the first year or two? I don't think so. I think what it will do is it will give you like the best tools ever like to create code. But what, what it's going to do is that it's going to make this amazing, amazing dynamic where the coder actually becomes more of a manager towards a computer system, which is a dream of mine. Like if it could actually do that, where I just sit back and I give it instructions, even like I'll just say stuff to it, you know, like I'll just talk to it. I'll say, hey, create this, put this, uh, you know, uh, panel over here, put this and that. And it'll just like create it on the screen. That would be the coolest way to code. So it might not just replace programmers. It might just make the programmer like 10,000 more times effective. And so the world will, will start moving in such a fast pace. Uh, because, I mean, you still need to have the people that actually manage this system, right? You can't just, I mean, maybe not right now. Maybe in the next five to ten years, it might have like a whole thing that, that you don't even have to have the manager anymore. It just knows what to do or something. I don't know. But for right now, for the immediate future, I see it first and foremost being the best learning tool that you can for coding. And the second one is that it'll just make you a much more efficient coder. I mean, if it could just show you examples, but the actual, what I'm waiting for is, as I said, when this thing has like a little browser window and it actually keeps on iterating on a solution that I, that I tell it what to, what to add, that's going to be so cool. And that might not necessarily replace programmers. That might just make the programmer kind of like more of like a product manager. And the computer being more of like the, you know, a, a, the programmer in the trenches kind of. But that's actually a welcome. Um, I actually welcome that. That'd be so cool. Like we would become like the greatest programmers ever if we have such a high level ability to create software. It would be more of like a design thing. So. So basically, I see this as a net positive. I mean, only time will tell how this thing uh treats us you know either it demotes us or it promotes us we'll see but this thing is absolutely huge and i give it a 10 out of 10 out of 10 out of 10 this is one of the greatest technologies i've ever seen in my life